Hi and welcome to this video in our series about making a holly jolly journal. Uh, you will have seen the various lives and videos that Miss P has done and created this very nice holly jolly journal in two signatures. Uh, she will have done a flip through I'm sure of the contents uh, but this video is looking particularly at making the cover. Now we've decided to make a fabric cover for it from scratch and for that we need, we've measured the journals uh, and we've had some sizes and we're going to make the cover about quarter of an inch larger top to bottom and left to right than the actual journal just so it covers it nicely but without too much excess. Uh, when the two journal the signatures are together we need a two inch spine uh, and we need what's called the French groove or a gutter between the two so they fold up nicely uh, and the one inch overlap refers to the material that we need to make that larger than the piece of cardboard that we're going to use so that we can then wrap it round and cover the inside. Uh, our particular journal we're going to make the cover at eight and a half by six and a quarter, uh, the spine eight and a half by two, and the gutter uh, is two lots of an eighth of an inch, and the overlap as we said is an inch. So what we're going to make this out of is uh, some of this grey card, uh, we're using this because I happen to have it, but you could use a cat box or any thickish card that you'd want. Uh, this is 750 grams per square meter so it's quite firm but not excessively so. You can see that it's quite firm, it doesn't it will bend but it's quite solid. Uh, and then we, the fabric we're going to be using is some that uh, one of our regular helpers, Hilda Davidson, provided us with. She sent us some nice sparkly pink, which we thought would be perfect to go with the pinky red theme of our journal. I'm going to use that for the outside. I've only got that piece, so I'm going to have to put something different on the inside. Uh, so we've got sort of a matching one, which is nice and sparkly again, in silver. And we'll use that for inside of the cover, but we'll do that later. Uh, this piece, if we get the bits of card that we've cut, we will see that it is just big enough. If I was to put that there, obviously it'd be the other way around, but you can get the drift. That there and there, with a sort of eighth of an inch. You'll see that it's just just large enough top to bottom. Uh, it isn't quite the inch that we'd perhaps like, but it's sufficient. Uh, and of course that then will be folded over like that, all the way around. Uh, and then that, we've got quite a bit of extra that way, um, but just enough that way. So what we need to do is to attach these bits of card to that is the first job. So I'm going to turn that over because that's the way that it needs to be. Now what you could do is, is measure that out on the back of there so you know where to place these. Um, but I think if we place them down, as we can see, we haven't got much leeway top to bottom. But if we put them roughly in the right place, we can worry about trimming, etc. afterwards. So there we go. So what we're going to use is some Aileen's tacky glue out of my small bottle. Uh, just going to decant some of that onto a saucer just to make it slightly easier for me. And I've got a brush there to apply it with. So what I'm going to do is rather than stick the glue on the fabric and then stick it to the card, I'm going to put the glue on the back of the card and stick it to the fabric. So let me get some out of here. Need a nice good blob. That would probably be sufficient. Uh, 
What I'm going to do is once I've stuck the card on, I'm going to set it aside, put some acetate over it, put some weight on it, and let it dry. Um, what you might find is that the moisture in the glue, if you just put it on, put it flat, eventually it will curl slightly because of the moisture in the glue. If you put some weight on whilst it's still damp, then it'll dry nice and flat. That's what I find anyway. So we're just going to put some glue on the back of this one. Don't have to be anything. Don't have to take too much care, just as long as it's all covered. You don't want too much because we don't want it coming through the fabric. If you're using a thinner fabric, uh, you may have to take more care and perhaps use a different glue. Uh, this one I think is reasonably thick and non-transparent so would be alright just by putting a, a layer of this glue on and putting it on top. There we go. That's as complicated as it gets. Anybody that knows me knows I don't like complicated. <gasps> There we go. So we're just going to place this by eye, the first one. Try and get a reasonably even top to bottom. As you can see on this fabric, that's the salvage at the top, but that will be folded over to the inside so we won't see it too much. And there we go, we'll just smooth that out. That's the first piece down. Now to ensure You'll probably see that start to curl, but it won't matter once we weigh it down later. To ensure that we get a, a reasonably even gap, I've got this which is a, a quilting spacer, and it's exactly an eighth of an inch. So when I come to place the next one down, I'll put that in between, and then we'll have nice even spacings. Again, you could mark it up if that's the way you prefer to do it. Again, here we go. It's best to do it on camera, otherwise you can't really see, can you? Once I've uh, finished this, I'll, I'll put the weight on and I'll give it a few hours. Let it dry thoroughly. Uh, the longer you can leave it, even leave it overnight, then you'll avoid any warping of your card and your cover. There we go, nice smear on there. Get that again, line that up with the spacer, line it up top and bottom. And there we go. And we'll push that down. You can even get the little brayer, give it an extra little bit of push. one. Obviously the measurements are dependent on your, your own journal, depending on what size you've made it to, um, but generally about a quarter of an inch overlap all the way around is, is usually sufficient. Um, if you've got a number of tags and things that have got tabs or ribbons or whatever you may want to make it large enough to include them but I think it's nice when it when they're on show if you make it too big uh, it looks nice when them tags are in but if you take the tags out and it starts to look like the covers slightly too big and there's no point in putting tags and ribbons and embellishments on if you can't see them is there I prefer to see a journal that looks kind of overstuffed than too meagre. There we go, we'll use the spacer again just to make sure it's the same. Line up the tops. And there we go, weigh that down, give it a quick bray, as you can see that's starting to curl, that's because of the moisture and the glue, that 
that's why we're going to weigh it down and leave it, give it some time. Next thing we're going to do is to make sure we've got no glue on our hands. It's just to turn it over and just make sure that we haven't got any undue wrinkles on the back. There we go, I think that's too bad. Obviously then that will be then, uh, we'll wrap that round when we dry and cover the inside. So that's nice. So, and there we go, that's it. I'm going to take that away now, weigh it down, give it time to dry, just to stop this. I don't know if you can see, but it's just got a slight, starting to warp. Slightly that's because of the moisture in the glue. And if I was to leave that, that would dry that way and it would be that way forever. So what we'll do is weigh it down, get rid of the warp, and we'll come back to you soon. See you soon. Hi, welcome back. That's now given that time to dry. It's had a little bit of weight on it. Uh, as you'll see that it's dried nice and flat now. Got rid of those curviness that we had because the moisture in the glue uh, which just made the board warp slightly. That's the pink cover. That's the way that it's going to be. There's the spine, front, back. Uh, so what we need to concern ourselves now is with the inside. And what we decided to do is to use a very similar fabric that I introduced to you earlier, which is the silver version of the same thing. Uh, and what I'm going to do is just, just to cover that inside in exactly the same manner, put the glue on the boards, glue the fabric down, and then when that's dry, what we're going to do is sew round it and then use pink in shears so that we've got a nice sort of edge to it, which is very in keeping with the holiday sort of theme. So all we need to do is to get some of our glue again, some of our Aileen's, cover the boards, perhaps a little bit in the groove, uh, and then put the other fabric on top. We don't need to glue this fabric or, or any of the exposed fabric because we're going to sew that close to the border and then trim it off with some pinking shears to give us that nice sort of jagged edge so we don't need to glue the actual fabric, just the boards. Give it a nice generous coat all over, nice and even. Try and do it relatively quickly because of course it's going to start drying um, as soon as we start spreading it a bit thinner uh, and of course we want to cover all of it in one big fail swoop. There we go, and that board in the middle. Let's get some, get a wiggle on as they say. I don't need to get obsessive about the amounts of glue um, because it is going to be sewn around so nothing's actually going to be able to move anyway um, but we're just getting a nice even coat then we'll get the best looking finish I feel. So that's that covered. We'll just use whatever little bit of glue we've got just to put some into that groove just to give it an idea that that's where they, they want to fold when they fold. There we go. Now we put that to one side. Get the other piece of fabric. Pretty much line it up at the top. Which is about there. And just lay that down on top. Smoothing out as we go. It should get 
rid of any wrinkles that might have may have been in the fabric. We'll just get the uh, bone folder, uh, just find those creases and just give it a little press into there. Just because we know that's where ultimately we want to, the, the two covers to fold. So we'll just run that up and down there. Just to give it the idea that that's where it's going to go. Uh, and then that's going to go like that, which is quite a nice, neat little... Um, there's the front, there's the inside, sewn around, thinking she is. Uh, so we'll just stop there for a second, just give that a little time to dry, uh, and then we'll come back and Miss P will sew around the outside for me, because she's a far better machinist than I am. Catch you soon. Bye. Welcome back. We're now just about to sew up the edges, so if Miss Paintlot would like to start the sewing for me, that'd be great. using the zipper foot so she can get in real close and tight to the edge of the book cover. Second long side, lovely neat sewing, far better than I could do. for me when she's ready and we'll be ready for the next part. Thank you very much. I'll just dig out my uh, pinking shears and uh, we'll get right. 
Welcome back. I've unearthed the pinking shears so we can have a go at that in a second but first of all we just want to show the, the quality of the sewing. Look how neat that is all the way around that edge. I mean there's no way I would could get anywhere close to that level of perfection. Uh, that's the inside. Now it's a nice silvery colour. There you see that folds up nicely into a book cover. Front, inside, or of course, inside, front. <laughs> we have to make his mind upon that one. Um, so next we're going to do is the pinking, which is slightly nerve-wracking, being as all the work that we've put in so far could all go horribly wrong at this point. But we shall endeavour to do our best. So we're going to try and keep the edge of that shear along the edge, which should just, because of the thickness of the blade, should just give us enough room out from there to look attractive, but not ruin the stitching, he says, hopefully. Anyway, here we go. Let's be brave. The problem is you can't really see you from the top, so I'm just going to... Start off, use the full length of the scissors. Lining up the last stitch with the teeth of the blade. Oh lordy, once you get in a bit it starts getting harder. There we go, lining that stitch up, stitch, lining that serrated edge up with the last one so that we get a, a nice even if you're a bit if you offset it slightly you can end up with sort of a, a one that isn't a true peak in line with the rest uh, so we're going to endeavor to try and keep them as neat and even just make it take slightly longer to get round than might otherwise be the case there we go, that's, you see there's this sort of, the edge, there's the edge of the book cover, which looks quite nice. <sighs> One down, three to go. We'll do the other shorter side, which gives me a chance to breathe. We want to try and get as reasonably close in as we can, but not that close that we're going to do any damage to the actual stitching. It's nerve-wracking this. I can feel myself holding my breath. If it suddenly goes quiet, it's because I've blacked out <laughs> under the intense pressure. This is the problem when you're doing somebody else's, and somebody's made such a lovely job of everything. You have to step in and... There's some nice bits there, Flair. Look, they make a nice... That's far too good to throw away, as is the silver on the back. They're definitely going into a, into a ruffle. That's a good idea. I'll put the ruffle foot on and we'll make a ruffle out of those. Right, here we go across the top. Those that are observant will see that I'm using the scissors with my left hand, even though I am predominantly right-handed. For some bizarre quirk of nature, I can only use scissors with my left hand. Don't ask me why that is. Start getting a bit further along. 
gets increasingly difficult to get your scissors in the right place. Trying to fight the fight the urge to sort of de develops an urge to sort of go in towards the stitching, which I'm doing my best to avoid. Ooh, and breathe. I think you just think that's, that's looking. And there's the inside. I think that's a very nice effect. One left. One long side to do. And then I can start to breathe again. Get some colour back in me cheeks. Sure, a braver person could whiz round there much quicker. But it's like every every cut is like intense pressure. And once we've done this, of course, the only thing left to do will be to uh, do the book binding. Again, there's just two signatures to sew in. Uh, using a three hole pamphlet stitch so it's not, you know, slightly less nerve wracking but not much. Huh. So there we go, there's some little glittery ribbons to turn into some ruffles. There's the edge all the way around. with the inside and I think that's turned into a perfect cover for a holly jolly Christmas journal. Two inch spine. Let's get the two signatures and have a quick check. Make sure we're looking bob on. I'm not sure which is the front one and which is the rear but I don't suppose it really matters at this point. Go. That's what it's going to look like. Perfect size spine. Perfect to perfect to complement to the insides. Uh, and there we go. So the next time you see me, I shall be sewing in those. So bear with me, and I'll sort out my bookbinding equipment. Hi, welcome back. That's the cover that's been covered in fabric, sewn around, and the pink in shears around the outside. I've already sewn the first signature in to give you an idea what it looks like. There's the sort of threads on the outside. Uh, there's the signature sewn on on the inside. Uh, and we just need to sew in the other signature which I've saved to show you. Um, most of you are probably familiar with a three hole pamphlet stitch, uh, but that's what we're going to be doing to uh, so the, the signature into the journal. Uh, the first thing I've done is, whether you can see that on camera, is marked up the three hole, where the three holes are going to go. It's a two inch spine, which means we've got allowed an inch for each signature. So the center of that inch is the, the half, half an inch. So we've got, that is half an inch in from the edge and an inch apart from the the holes for that signature, if that makes sense. Uh, and then what we need to do is to replicate them positions for the holes within the journal. Uh, and as you can see, that oh, you should be able to see there, hopefully that I've already done that. There's one there, one there, and one there. Uh, we've come in about an inch and a half from the bottom and an inch and a half from the top, and obviously that hole is in the center. Obviously you can adjust that to suit your own taste and to the size of your journal. So the next thing we need to do is, the easiest way to do it is to fasten these, get the, get the, uh, the signature, push it into your, your hand so that the all the pages within the signature come to the same point. 
and then get some clips uh, and just clip the journal together with those points all going in the same direction. Do the same at the bottom, get them all pushed back nice and neat so they're all going to a point and drop the little clips into there and into there uh, and then when we open it up they should all be in line uh, and what we need to do is to poke an hole through the where we've marked it through and it should come out hopefully on that centre line of that one which means they're in they're all in line and they'll be sewn in in line so uh, So what we're going to do is get the uh, pokey stick, or the awl if you prefer, A-E-W-L, but commonly known as a pokey tool. Put it on the dot, keep it vertical perpendicular to the table, put a, a mat through so that you're not going to poke a hole into your cutting mat or your table, and just push it through. And do the same again on that point. And same again on the last one. Uh, and hopefully when we look, then them holes should be pretty much along that fold line, which they are. Uh, right. Now the next thing to do before we start to sew is to check that you've got it the right way up. Uh, all the pages the right way up uh, within the, the one that we've done. As you see, we've actually chosen to put the silver on the outside and the pink on the middle, which I think is the nicest choice. Um, this one, as you can see the pockets, the wording, and everything is that way up. Santa there, everything is that way up. So when we sew this one in, we need to make sure that it's the same way up as that one. It's very easy to sew it in upside down and then you have to undo it all and start all over again. Which can be frustrating. Uh, what we're going to be using to sew it is uh, some waxed thread. It's used for leather making and for book binding. It's uh, just thread that's been covered in wax. Uh, it has a couple of advantages. One, it kind of lubricates it so it makes it easier to pull through leather uh, and also when the wax sets it tightens on itself so it doesn't come undone and it's waterproof of course not that you'd be taking your journal out in the wet but if you were taking your saddle out you would be uh, so then i've threaded up a length uh, and basically i've taken twice the height of the signature plus a bit extra. So if I was to pull that needle to the middle you can see that it's two three inches longer than the signature and two lengths and that should be enough to go round and through and back out and you'll have a little bit to chop off at the end but it's better to have too much than too little. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is because we're going to end up with the threads on the inside then we start from the inside. The first thing we do is to go through the middle hole gently out and ease it out through that hole which is in the middle of that fold line. Wiggle it a little, pull it through and then keep pulling until you get the tail of the thread just about the same length as the, the width of the page. And to stop you pulling that through any further you get a clip and just clip it to that page it'll stop you getting carried away and pulling the thread all the way through and again having to start again. So now we've gone through the signature we're going to go through the butt, the spine in the middle hole come out to the other side pull it but not too tight we don't want you to pull it too tight at this point uh, then back in the top hole back to the center and then find the middle hole in there, poke it through, hopefully come out in the middle. Sometimes it needs a little bit of wiggling to find the right place. 
particularly when you're doing it on a live, if you're not on camera, you'll find that it goes straight through first time. Right, come on, let's find you. If in doubt, get your tool and refine the hole. Sometimes it just needs to be reminded of who's boss. There we go. That's gone through straight through this time. Pull it out to the middle. Again, leave a little bit so you've got room to manoeuvre. Uh, and then we come straight down to the bottom and out the bottom hole. There we go. And then the last one is out through that bottom hole to the outside. Uh, and then the last one is we're going to go back in through that centre one. The thing to remember here is to try not and catch, try not and split the thread that's already there. It, it, if you pass through, sometimes you can catch and split the thread and it passes through and, th and then you'll never be able to pull it tight because it's caught between that. If that happens then it's the easiest probably to take the needle off, pull the thread back to the outside and, and try again. You'll, you'll know instantly if you've done that. Uh, right, and then the last thing, the very last thing, is to pop it back through that centre. Again, making sure that you don't split the thread. Again, on camera, you'll find that it goes straight through without any grief. <gasps> When you're on camera, you'll find that it won't find the hole. If you now get your pokey tool, <gasps> remind it who's boss. And then we go straight through. It always likes to be reminded who's boss. There we go, take the needle off and undo that one. And you'll find you've got your two threads and that one running down the middle. You need to take one of these threads to the other side of the centre one so that you've got one each side so that when we tie it off we're tying that centre thread in the middle uh, and now is the point that we need to think about tightening some things up. So we can pull gently on the middle one, pull gently on the other one, get them to behave. And then if you pull from the outer ones and try and pull vertically, if you try and pull too much on these ones, you'll find that it starts to cut in uh, and it's, it's you don't want to cut into your paper too much. It'll take a certain amount of abuse, but not excessive. All right, so making sure we've got one either side. Pull that one, pull that one. Check that we're nice and tight against the spine. Check that we're nice and straight on the back. Give it one last tighten, just for safety. And then we'll tie it off. Tie it. Reef knot. Left over right, right over left. Uh, and then what we do is tie a little bow for a decorative finish. Perhaps just a slightly smaller bow, maybe. There we go. I mean, you can just leave it in a knot if you prefer. Um, most people seem to tie bows. Uh, and then what you can do to make doubly sure is just double tie that bow, pass the one side of the bow through to the other and then tie it off. And then that won't come apart ever. Uh, trim them off to the same lengths. And there we go, that's that sewn in at uh, the back. Looks nice and straight. 
bit hard to see against that silver, but they're relatively straight. Remove the clips. And there we go. That's that journal book bound. And there's the front cover. There's the inside. We can see that the signature's nice and tight against the spine. We flip through, flip through, flip through, flip through. Flip through, flip through, and then there's the middle that separates the two signatures. Uh, and again, that one just nicely folds so that when you're following it through, it all lies nice and neat. So there we go. That's the book binding done. I think that journal we think we can probably call complete. Um, Miss P may decide to do some embellishment on the outside, um, but I'll leave that up to her. So thank you very much. There we go. That's the Holly Jolly Journal. Virtually, if not completely complete. Thank you very much. Bye.